Hello, I'm going to talk about uh, building desktop apps. And the first thing, uh, first uh, disclaimer, I didn't sleep last, last night. So this is going to be hard, as hard for you as to me. Hmm? Uh, it was not so fun, <laughs> but okay. Uh, okay, so uh, why a desktop app? And why I say or the pendulum the pendulum sliding back? Because each time I say I, that I want to do desktop applications, there is always someone that says why. If now we we do everything in the web, and I kind of tired of this. I'm old. I already said, and I have seen the hype change from one side to the other several times already. Uh, starting from the mainframes, which was kind of a tiny cloud because it was terminal, stupid terminals connected to there. Uh, and then everything started to slide from one side to the another. Everything to the client, everything to the server. Everything to the client, everything to the server. And it's kind of frustrating because uh, uh, we cannot stabilize uh, 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 ever as programmers. And in fact, reality is that there is no... Uh, there is no uh, uh, massive movement to the world of web applications. It's something that I have been hearing uh, as as a reality since 20 years at least. And in fact, uh, you have to count how many actually web applications you are running in your in your computers. So that does not mean that there is no uh, there is no space for for web applications. In fact, there are a lot of them there, but but there is still a place for desktop applications. And we, uh, in Faro, we pretend to be a generic purpose language. So we need to uh, actually pro provide a way to, to, to do, to create these applications. So, and that's why I'm continuing talking about this. Uh, Hernan that knows me with my real name, not Sebastian, uh, knows that I'm kind of obsessed of the, uh, in this. Uh, <laughs> the, the first conference, in the first small talk conference, I presented Seaside, but then also a desktop application, <laughs> and I have been doing this at least 14 years already. So, and I'm going to, I'm going to continue until I win. So, and this is me, you already know that. So, for, as I say, for uh, uh, can be useful for doing different uh, applications. Uh, there is what I call the service applications. Uh, I'm going to explain it a little bit later. The web applications, you all know what it is, and desktop applications. Here I'm not mentioning uh, terminal applications, command line applications, because uh, in one side it's easy if it is just a processing of uh, parameters. And in the other side, it's super difficult if it's a complete terminal user interface. And we are still far from, from there, but we are starting to move also in that direction. But five years from here, maybe we have something. <laughs> Not right now. So ser uh, service applications is what is, uh, is the, these applications that uh, they use Faro just in the server. And in fact, it's kind of half of an application. They they provide a service to fat clients like this one, which is up, up to grid. Uh, and then uh, and then uh, uh, they split all the behavior bet between the client and the server in the in a client server application, a typical client server application, but with the web in the in the middle in this case. But it could be different. The thing the point here is that uh, Faro here just provides uh, an, an API in some way, and the, the client can connect to there, to them, and that creates some problems for deployment. But is completely different to what we will talk about. And then we have real web applications. This is JustPlan, uh, which uh, is made with Seaside and a lot of other stuff. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, since it's web, the deployment uh, the deployment of these applications uh, has a different, complete different uh, uh, 
constraints that 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 what we have also. And why I'm going to, uh, I'm talking about deployment as I say I'm dead asleep, so this is going to be hard to start. <laughs> I'm going to talk with, with deployment because this is the uh, the principal problem that uh, everybody talks when you say you, you you should be doing web applications and not desktop applications because you can deploy them and then distribute, and it has its compl uh, complexities. And uh, but we need to tackle that. So Faro already covers very good the web side or the server side of the spectrum. But what happens about the uh, about the desktop applications? Well, in a point, this is how uh, desktop applications can be seen in Faro, and you see that uh, this is most right away. It starts to lag in in I don't know how to call it uh, in uh, human interface guidelines. It doesn't look like anything that anybody know, uh, knows, and it, it doesn't look. Uh, as familiar as people expect, and it's kind of uncomfortable for newbies because uh, they don't know what to do. And that's the kind of applications that today we can do with Faro, and that's the kind of applications that uh, that most small talks are restrained to do. Why? Because in part, uh, in part, we are. Uh, prisoners of our conception that we deliver the full image with the full ID, because that means that people can actually interact with the program and modify it, which is cool. But at the same time, we live in the real world and then it's complicated to actually do a, a product and a, that you want to distribute, deliver, sell maybe uh, in this way. And in fact, the last talk of Carlos is a good example because precisely it's something made for him but it's complicated uh, to, to package and sell it. And that's what we want to, uh, what, that's what we want to solve. Uh, as I say, service web applications have a different approach, but we need to define what is the, the artifact that we want to deploy. And for desktop, we want the standalone applications, a desktop application, and it has to be minimal. We do not uh, want to ship the whole environment. Why? Because I'm going to talk later, but there are there are reasons why it's, it's a good idea to do it. We have a we need a graphic user interface, and it has to be multi-platform. Uh, it has to have also if it's going to run in the desktop, it has to has have have a, an inter, uh, an integration with the operating system, and it has to be easy to package and install. And that's uh, that's what we are trying to cover here. So let's start building an application image. I'm not going to re-explain already what is spec uh, uh, with its backend GTK. I, uh, I think everybody here knows there are examples around. Uh, you can go to YouTube and there are some other talks I give if you don't know, you don't know but as I said yesterday, it's a, it's a framework to create graphic user interfaces that accepts different backends, and one of those backends is GTK. Why we use GTK? Because it's portable and it has a lot of terms and it looks cool and and it has it has solves it has solved a lot of usability usability problems that uh, otherwise we will take a lot of time to do it. So I'm going to skip the demo because I think I will not have enough time. Uh, I'm going to put it at the end all together. <laughs> uh, so, but why we want a, 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 a small, uh, a minimal image? Because uh, sometimes you do not want to consume all the resources that you could consume if you ship the, the whole the whole image, and this is. Uh, we are used to say that uh, there is the more slow and there is a lot with the resources, the memory that we have today. This is not an issue, but in fact, uh, it is an issue. <laughs> uh, even uh, even uh, consuming CPU cycles, uh, we can say that it's not ecological today, but it's also uh, damaging the performance, the, the general performance of the computer. If you 
if you are doing that. You, we need to do efficient programs or, or the most efficient pro programs that we can we, the, the, that we can get. The memory f footprint then then is then is, is important. The CPU footprint is also important. In the case of Faro today, if you shift the complete uh, environment, you will have uh, a polling cycle, which is the morphic cycle that will keep your CPU in around two or three percent constantly, which is barely acceptable while, uh, while you are developing, but it's clearly not acceptable if you are going to have programs running with Faro, different programs running with Faro. Uh, uh, that might, may, might be evil all the time and uh, there is no reason for consuming that. And also when you have the full environment, you have a, a bigger startup time, which is important to reduce sometimes. So what we do is to start about the minimal image. Since some years, Faro ships with the complete IDE, but it, it also ships with, with a minimal image. And then uh, we can uh, we can load just what we want. Instead of doing what we did before, that it start to remove parts, what we do is to start f in in small and add 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 things using Metacello as a basis. But this approach is complicated because you need to to cover the gap between what you have in the minimal and what you put in your baseline. And sometimes it's, you do not declare everything there. In fact. Usually you do not declare that. And this is a man manual process, but uh, we are trying to create some ways of uh, overcome this. Uh, so the first approach that we did is to, or, of course, create a, a script that does this. I presented this last year, uh, and it was in that stage at, at that moment. Uh, I call this the Pavelization of, of, the, of, of the process because Pavel tends to do scripts all the time for doing everything. <laughs> so, and it was working. It was nice. I, I presented uh, the same example that I'm going to present here. But of course, as I say, it's, a, it's doing it as a caveman because we do small talk, so we do not want to do scripts all the time. <laughs> so, obviously. But okay, let's suppose we, we already have the image. What's next? We have to package it. First, the platform integration. We have already different packages to do, to, to, to provide package, uh, platform integration that you can use in your in, in your program. In Windows, we have the package Faro OS Window and uh, Chrome Interaction that you can use. And in Mac, you, you have uh, an object C bridge that you can use to interact. There are examples there. Since I will not have time and Hernan will not let me <laughs> pass. I, I didn't <laughs> think, <laughs> thought any on, on presented, but it is there and you can use it. And in Linux, uh, you do not need it. Also, because you do not need it because also you are going to use be using GTK, which is already core in Linux. So this part is not really necessary there. So well, but then we need two packages. And, and, do, and you need to, you, you want your application to have a custom icon and branding and et cetera. And in Windows, that means to modify an executable met metadata because everything is inside the exe and then you have to, to modify it. You can, uh, there are tools to switch the icon and change it di directly in the exe. We are not doing that yet. I want to, but for now we are not doing, we are doing something else, I'm going to show it that. In Mac is super easy because there is a property list that you have to edit and that's all. And in Linux it's also easy because you have a, 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 a file with all the information and then you can provide it as you want, you can do it as you want. Then we need an installer and that's another problem because the installer of Windows is an MSI file and it's super complicated to do. And in Mac, you have this window that drag and drop to the applications for doing. It's kind of easy to do, but then you have to notarize, you have to validate, you have to verify, notarize, and doing, I, I don't know how many steps more. And in, Li and in Linux, the packaging uh, depends, will give you the install, but it depends a lot in the distribution. 
y Febre is easy, you have a big package build, which is easy to do, but if not, you have to do Debian, but, and to be honest, we didn't solve that, pro that part of the problem yet, but okay. Uh, so, how we do it? There is a template generate, uh, gen generation support that you can install and use it, and it will generate different things for different cases. In the case of Windows, which is what is using the image there, it will generate a, pow a PowerShell script and a CMake script that will download, a, uh, create a C program that uses the VM, because the VM is embeddable, it's a DLL, and that C programs it will embed the icons and your name and your stuff. That's going to uh, that's going to do, and it also will create an installable ML MSI. And in Mac, it does more or less the same. It's a lot more. Uh, it's a lot simpler. As uh, but more or less, there is one step less. But, but okay, but you you have to do something like that. So uh, this is how you could go to having nothing to having a deliverable, something that you can ship and put in a, in a store or something. But I think this is kind of complex. No, it's a lot of steps. You do the application, that you cannot skip that, but then you have to uh, create the minimal image, uh, uh, create the packages for each distribution, and you uh, to have a lot of steps. And I do not think many people will be happy with that. I still remember the times where you you you, you were getting a exe, compiling exe and running, and it was very it was a happy time. So we can do better. As Iler used to say, we are small talkers. We can do better. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, what we are doing now is. Since we, as, as you can see, we have all the pieces together. We are starting to put all them together into a tool that will be what you, you used to that. And then now is the demo, the actual demo, or the place where everything crashes. So first, sorry, I'm going to, how many time I have? Um, 15 weeks. Ah, a lot. Oh, oh, oh. I, I can do another talk. <laughs> eh, eh, eh. I don't... Ready? Yeah, okay. So this is a playbook, which is a tool that I'm testing and experimenting. It's not in the image, but it basically it's like having a lot of playgrounds together. Yes. I have my own Jupyter by default because the bad side effect is that it shares all variables, which I was not expecting. But okay, let's see. The most uh, simple application to show is an example of a list, list presenter that you can see. It opens and, and it's very simple. If we see the example, which is here, you create an application, you declare the backend, and you pass and you open, and it's very simple. We have different things with icons and etc. but I don't know if I'm going to show that. I can show this, but that's not very interesting. It's just that you can modify all the list as you want, but okay. But doing that, you can do something like this, which is, I'm sorry for doing black, but I, this is GTK4, not GTK3, and changing the... Th I, I still didn't program the part where I changed the, the, the theme of GTK4, <laughs> basically. But okay. Also, it has a contrast with the white, so... This is the process browser that I'm migrating now, and it's a, it is already a, a, co a more complex application. But the application that I'm going to talk today is this, which is my example, my typical example which is a procedural galaxy that I generated, which does what a procedural galaxy does. It creates and things, and it creates 
Yeah, that's it. In fact, I programmed this to pro to, to test that we can have GTK with Athens in internal and then again GTK. So we can do custom components with any complexity. I could have done a regular button, but it was boring, so I did this. And now I use it as, <laughs> now I use it as a, a, a DIM. Uh, so this is how you do the application. Well, okay, you create an application with a star that will create a presenter and open it. And in the initialize, you put the, the backend that you are going to use with a configuration that in this case just has some uh, CSS because GTK uses CSS for that. And the important part is that you will have, you, you declare a name this, like this. Then you have a model that I'm not going to enter in details. And then you have the presenters. As I say, a presenter has, I concentrated all, all here for the sake of the demo. This is not how you do it. <laughs> you, you separate the parts <laughs> in different methods, but okay. I put in this for the demo. Uh, you, you declare a layout and you can have different kinds of layouts and and then the, the layout can have an Athens component. The Athens component can do different stuff, as you can see. And, well, and you can program in Athens like this. There is a hack. And the thing, this is already used in Alexandria, which is the new backend of Cairo that we use, and which is a lot faster. Okay, so this is an application. No, how we how we package this? <laughs> no, uh, we just have for the moment done the part of creating the minimal image. The copy of the templates and the executing is not there yet because it's. To be honest, I want to simplify it. I do not want to have to require a CLang install to create a, a Windows application because we can actually change the, the icon using the touch index, the executable by hand. So I want to do that. So we didn't do it. So what we do in fact is that we have this way of producing a, an application. We create a product, which is going to be the Galaxy. I execute this. Well, no needed because it's a reader, but okay. The product has a name, has an archetype. The archetypes is important because this is how we plan to cover the gaps. For example, you can have an archetype of GTK which pre-installs all the things that you need to do GTK with the spec there. It's kind of the same way as before. As you see, it defines a name, the image where it's going to be, and the the, the all the baselines that is required and some extra stuff that you can add to the image to not crash if you want. Uh, the idea here is that we could have also archetypes, for example, for a seaside application, because even if in a web server, in a server side, you can put the whole image the memory footprint that you will have with a stripped image without morphic and that will be a lot less than, than if you put everything. So you can do also that for web applications. But since this talk is about desktop applications, I'm doing this. So you have this archetype. You add the baseline that will, that will be your program, the main baseline. Uh, with the growth that you do, I can here I use a lemma random generator, so I put I put this for the demo, and then you can add extra baselines that the GTK uh, archetype does not contain, and and your baseline does not contain, and is needed. In this case, we need the package geometry because uh, I use vectors and that, <laughs> and this is not in the minimal, of course, and it is not in in GTK either. So you reset. I'm going to open this, and you can execute it. Reset will clean the, the place where you put it, and oh, ah, ah. 
you reset, you execute, and but it's start to to uh, to install stuff and blah blah. No. See, yes, I'm going to. I'm almost finished. <laughs> so, but of course, this is going to execute this in a in a, a in a script, which is something that, of course, you can use for CI. But if you want to do it here, we have an application that you can execute. And of course, and if you, I have a problem with the icons because we, I don't know, don't worry. It's, this is a demo. There are things that fail. And then it's going to do the same as we did. It's going to generate here. And the idea is that eventually you will have a, you will have this tool to create your applications. I can check here if I'm going, uh, this is going to put everything uh, here. And if now I execute this, of course I have my procedural galaxy in, in a file that uh, has just 16 mega, what the regular image is around 50, 40 now. Uh, and it's everything there. Uh, the interesting part here is also that you can notice here, so as you open the activity monitor, if, since this is a, a, this is a GTK application, not a morphic application, there is just clock consumption when you do something and then it goes idle again without problem. So you can have different things. And in fact, if you see here, for example, this is an application that I use to do my stuff. And this is made, I can show you later because it, <laughs> it is there. This is an image that is running in this, in this way, for example, no? Uh, so the last thing is since this is an application to build applications. This also can be packaged. So if you do this, I reset and I build it. I want to build my package application as a separated package that eventually people could have and use it without needing to install it in the image. So then they can have this. So meet me. Then if we go there. Uh, oh, okay, crash you. That then I have to recreate this. Bah, okay. I, as I say, the demo always fails. <laughs> but this is a problem of mine because I always try to do so in the this is, I know why it is crashing. It is because I'm using GTK4 and I'm working right now in the migration from GTK3 to GTK4. So there are things that are not, but since I always try to work in the last thing that I do, I tend to generate more crashes. That, but it's the only way to advance, to move on. See? Oh, I oh know. Ah, but it's another, okay. I just have to believe me. This should eventually work. <laughs> that it was working yesterday. Works in my machine. No, but this is my machine. Oh, damn. Um, okay. Anyway, what you will see is the same window, but here, better executed. Better executed in the, in other place. So. While I try to do this work, you can uh, ask questions. Uh, there were some, uh, yes. Of course, we need to complete the generator and uh, simplify the process. And one thing that is important that we already didn't get is the possibility to have stateless images. 
complete read-only images that people cannot modify late. And we are working on that, but it's, that's the, the only important part that is missing is that. Yes. Uh, when are you expecting to have this ready, at least not perfectly, we're not working perfectly, but when can I use it? This, the, when can you use it? In a couple of months. This is going to be ready for the public consumption. We, we will ship with Faro 12. Maybe one week later because I have to ship Faro 12 and then I have to ship this. <laughs> so, but it, uh, the idea is to ship this tool with Faro 12, which will be in March. No, it, bah, April. To the, <laughs> and this will allow me to create Uh, the same application installer for Windows, Mac, Linux, and everything. the idea is that that it will. Be, I don't know if the first version. In fact, no. I, most probably, the first version will require you to have all the prerequisites uh, installed in your system. There will be a validation process that will verify that you have that before ex before trying to execute anything. But uh, but yes, the idea is that you will be able to uh, to to create. Uh, for the platform where you are running it. So I need to load the same code in each operating yeah, system and it create might, it again. Truth is, uh, we could do, if you're running Windows, we can generate for Mac because Mac is just uh, editing a, a property list, but uh, but not the opposite. <laughs> okay. The opposite, we need to cross compile and we don't want that. Sure. <laughs> Eh. Uh, first a comment this is extremely interesting and important thank you um, and I am intrigued by what you said about stateless image image that cannot be written uh, what does that mean right now we have as soon as you have a name It can mean different things. That's the thing. We are still thinking, and in fact, is, for example, Marcus wants an image where you can remove the compiler directly. Uh, but we need the compiler to build the image. <laughs> so then that will be a case where you, we need to remove it. <laughs> so that you cannot edit the image once. Uh, once the, then there are a, a, a lot of uh, small things that... Uh, Since we are not used to do this kind of stuff, there are more, a lot of things that they change the state internally and they are expecting to be written, the, the image expects to be saved. <laughs> With that, otherwise, things might not work. And especially what we do a lot is to touch the file system. We have a lot of, we create a complete tree of garbage that In, a, in an artifact that you ship uh, should not be there. So there will be levels. First, not writing in disk uh, this, for example, the every the changes file, <laughs> etc. <laughs> every, every. That can be, that is kind of solved today with different approaches. We, we, we didn't find the approach that this is most What, what we want for this. It's good. It's okay? 